Alrighty, a friend recently asked me how is the keyboard on the Steam Deck. But uh, first, to my surprise, I'd like to point out it is indeed possible to stream and install OBS on here. And this would actually allow us to demonstrate the keyboard. Of course, you need to use an external webcam. Um, you do have multiple microphone options on here. Um, and that we'll go into detail later on. I'm still experimenting, but right now I'm using one of the internal microphones um, or a pair of them. And I'm using, like, I had to boost the gain significantly. So you probably are going to hear a lot of background noise and the fans. Definitely the, the fans, but we're going to just roll with it. So let's call up the keyboard. And right off the bat, you'll notice this interesting cursor configuration. Well, I should actually point out how I'm doing that. Okay, so the Steam Deck has two trackpads. So if we hold down Steam key and the letter X, the keyboard will come up on the top or bottom depending on what we're doing. But one observation you might notice is that if I'm using the right pad, this is the maximum left it'll go. And if I'm using the left pad, this is as far right as I can go. And I'll demonstrate that on full screen right now. All right, calling up with a keyboard. And once again, this is my left uh, thumbstick or t uh, trackpad. And it's a struggle to get it to go this far right, but you can do it. That is like the maximum. And then the right side, it's the same thing, basically. Like, you can bring it almost to the letter G. I don't think you can get it to the letter G. But you can see that's the overlap here. In practice, you really only expected, like, to go you know this far which with either one so I really shouldn't be going past the letter J and letter U and letter N with my right side and with the left side I probably shouldn't be going past letter Y H and B and even though you could hit letter H with both of them and I could hit letter J with the one on the left it's a struggle either way so it's just much easier if I keep them on their side you know, stay in your lane, as some might say. Now typing, well, you just bring your pointer on top of the letter and you press down. And first couple of days, pressing down like this didn't really feel right. Once in a while, the interface gets a little gummied up, so I had to just close it. Call the keyboard up again. I don't know why it's coming up on the top of my screen. What the hell is that about? Oh, I see. Okay, mm -hmm. there we go. So now I can type O, and then I go to B and I press down on the trackpad, and I type a B, and I don't know why it's doing that. That is absolutely frustrating. Okay, let's mm -hmm. try that again. You can backspace using the letter X, or you could tap on the word backspace. So we're gonna do O, B. There we go. Now it's doing what it's supposed to do. And basically this works fine, but first couple of days I was using this, sometimes I would press down and as I'm pressing down, my thumb would roll and it would cause the uh, pointer to go to the neighboring key. like, And so that was a little annoying, but the keyboard was easy to get used to. The weirder part is like minimizing applications. Let's say I want to maximize this. Sometimes I'd, I'd go here, then when I press down, the pointer would jump here and click on the wrong button. Um, although, to be honest, I seem to be more proficient at this now, but even then, I'm not comfortable clicking on this button here because if I don't want to close an app by accident, there's a chance I will close it by accident. Um, and so the alternative is to use your trigger buttons, and I set up my trigger button so that my left trigger button is my left click and my right trigger button is my right click most people and if you google this people will say oh you should configure it you know the opposite and that's fine you know um on a no normal pc mouse you would be using your right index finger to do your left click but i felt more comfortable doing it this way and that's when i discovered something else 
when I wanted to, you know, install emulators, I downloaded Emudeck for, you know, vintage games. And when you open up the ROM manager, which I'm not going to open up right now, it flips the uh, configuration. It makes the left click button on the right trigger, it puts the right click button on my left trigger. And that would be fine, but last time I opened this app, I also noticed that it completely disabled my keyboard. Maybe it was a one-off issue. Maybe it wouldn't happen again, but obviously I don't want to have to exit desktop mode and reopen it again just because I opened this up. So we'll open up something safe. And you know, this is an area where I would prefer using my trigger buttons because these are not double click, these are single click. So if I press down on, let's say this folder, that was successful, but sometimes when I click on something, I drag it by accident and a couple of times I was moving my ROMs around, you know, games games for the emulators, and I would accidentally, you know, drag an item into a folder that it didn't belong in. So that was that that was a bit annoying. Um let's see, I gotta do something here. Mm -hmm. This is unrelated, but if I was on my other PC, whoops. I would do this while running. See, as you can see, the scroll bar is a little tricky to hit when you're using the trackpad. So I would generally prefer my trigger buttons when interfacing with those types of things. And you can also right click by pressing down on the left side trackpad. The left side trackpad does nothing other than clicking right now. like. The mouse will only move when I'm touching the right side trackpad or touchpad, whatever they call it. Because here's the thing, if you have any problem with the keyboard, and there is one problem with the keyboard, and that problem would be um, that you don't have any modifier keys. You know, if I need to hold down the Alt button while dragging a mouse pointer, like in OBS, I can't do that. There's no Alt button as far as I'm aware. Um, Maybe, you know, you could download a hacker's keyboard, as it's called, or, you know, like a third-party app that, you know, gives you more functionality. You can't use the uh, mouse at the same time. You can either use the mouse or you can use the, um, you got to exit the keyboard if you want to use the mouse. You can't, you know, jump off the keyboard and navigate the UI. It's either you're operating the keyboard or you're navigating the GUI. You're not doing both at the exact same time. Alrighty, and this uh, concludes my overview of the Steam Deck integrated on-screen keyboard, which is operated using the two touchpad mice. Um, overall, I think it's good, you know, for like typing things, and Steam Deck verified games will call up the keyboard when ne needed automatically. Um, if a game isn't Steam Deck verified, you have to hold down a key combination, uh, the, the Steam button and X button, to call it up manually. And that's fine for like, you know, occasional use but if you have a game which requires constant access to the keyboard you may want to uh, consider an external keyboard in my case the main reason i needed an external keyboard today was because um i had you know no easy way to access modifier keys and it you know wasn't absolutely necessary but when i was using filezilla which is like a a file manager a graphical file manager for you know sending files through secure ftp um it, you know, wasn't possible to highlight multiple items using the mouse without holding down the shift button. So, you know, having the external keyboard helped me a lot. This keyboard doesn't have Bluetooth, so I use the uh, Logitech Unifying Receiver. Now, this works out because any Logitech dongle with a uh, orange logo on it can be used on, you know, it can be used on any device that has the orange logo on the bottom. And even though this mouse is bought a year or two after the keyboard, I can use the Logitech unifying software to combine the devices onto one dongle. And that's a good idea because otherwise I would use up two USB ports and I only have two regular USB -A uh, type A ports. So consolidating devices onto a single dongle just makes sense. Even on a desktop computer where you have plenty of ports, I would highly recommend doing this if you're using the Logitech receiver with the orange logo. However, of course, the Steam Deck has Bluetooth in it, and 
if I needed to, I can certainly use Bluetooth to connect my mouse to the Steam Deck, and I could buy it. In fact, I have a, a separate Bluetooth keyboard floating around that is considerably more portable than this one. So, you have options, I have options, and, um, you know, it depends. But in my case, I'm definitely going to be using this anytime I connect to my TV, or anytime I want to stream a game. Mostly, because I mean, I got two options now. I can stream a game using OBS, and that's a separate topic, on the Steam Deck, but only when I'm in desktop mode. Or I can use this in conjunction with another computer, and that will probably be more versatile if, you know, I have access to a computer like when I'm at home. But with that, I think that covers all our bases. Uh, stay tuned, this will be an ongoing series of long and short videos about the Steam Deck and the overall user experience of this device. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave a comment. And, of course, please like and subscribe to my channel if you are not already subscribed. And with that, I think we are done here. End transmission.